Hello and welcome to Monster Abilities and Pathfinder 2nd Edition Part 2, Swallow, Hole, and Engulf, presented by How It's Played. In the previous video of this series, we discussed the grab action, and now we're going to continue that discussion with one of the actions available to some monsters after they grab a creature with their mouths, Swallow Hole. As grabbing an enemy is a requirement to use Swallow Hole, it is encouraged that you watch my video on the grab action before continuing here. A link to that video is provided in this video's description. Let's look at the Dinosuchus or Giant Crocodile as an example. It has a melee jaw attack and includes plus grab in its damage entry. It can spend an action to perform this attack, and if that attack hits, then it can spend a second action to grab the victim of the jaw attack, if it does so, it can then spend its third action to perform Swallow Hole. Here we see Swallow Hole has the attack trait, followed by Large, 2d8 plus 7 bludgeoning damage, and Rupture 18. The attack trait is self explanatory. Using Swallow Hole contributes to and is affected by the multiple attack penalty. The next part says Large. This is the largest sized creature it can attempt to swallow. Also note, that it can only swallow one creature of the listed size, but there is no hard limit to the number of smaller creatures it can have swallowed at any given time. So this Dinosuchus only has room for one horse in its stomach, but can fit as many humans and goblins as the GM allows. When a monster uses Swallow Hole, they roll their athletic skill versus the reflex DC of their victim. In the case of Dinosuchus, it has an athletics bonus of plus 20, so it would roll 1d20 plus 20 versus the reflex DC of the creature being swallowed. And the reflex DC will be 10 plus the victim's reflex save bonus. This attack roll is further modified as usual, so if the Dinosuchus attempted to swallow a creature in the same turn that it grabbed that creature in its jaws, it would suffer a negative 5 multiple attack penalty to this swallow hole attack, making it plus 15 versus the target's reflex DC. But if the Dinosuchus waited until the start of his next turn and the creature was still grabbed by its mouth, then it would not face any multiple attack penalty then. On a success, the grabbed creature is swallowed and suffers the listed damage, in this case 2d8 plus 7 bludgeoning. Note that although this is being defended by a reflex save DC, this is not the same thing as a basic saving throw, therefore no damage is rolled or halved on a failure, it's all or nothing the victim either is swallowed or it is not. Also, the victim suffers this damage not only when they are swallowed, but they suffer it again at the end of each of their turns. No additional attack rolls are required. Once the creature is swallowed, it automatically suffers this damage at the end of each of its turns. Once a creature is swallowed, it suffers the grabbed and slowed one conditions. Slowed 1 means that the victim only has 2 actions per turn instead of 3 while they're swallowed, and they must hold their breath or they begin suffocating. A creature can hold its breath for a number of rounds equal to 5 plus their constitution modifier. At the end of each turn this count is lowered by 1 if they did not attack or cast spells during their turn, and it is lowered by 2 if they did attack or cast a spell. Also note, that if a creature that is holding its breath speaks or attempts to cast a spell that has a verbal component, then they lose all of their remaining air. When a creature runs out of air, they fall unconscious and begin suffocating. Under normal circumstances when a creature that is unconscious but still has hit points suffers any amount of damage, they wake up and lose the unconscious condition. But not in this case. When swallowed whole, once you become unconscious, that condition cannot be removed until you are free from whatever swallowed you. And once you're unconscious, you must attempt a DC 20 fortitude save at the end of each of your turns. On a failure, you suffer 1d10 damage in addition to the damage applied by the swallow hole effect, and on a critical failure, you die. Not gain the dying condition, but you skip past that entire mechanic and you die. On every round after the first, the DC of this check increases by 5, and the damage applied for failing the save also increases by an additional 1d10. Once you have access to air again, you stop suffocating and lose the unconscious condition if you are still above 0 hit points. And all of this begs the question of once you're swallowed, how do you get out? The first way to free yourself is with the escape action. This works just as described in the previous video about the grab action, 
you roll acrobatics, athletics, or unarmed attack versus the monster's athletics DC, and on a success you free yourself by climbing back out of the monster's mouth and ending in a space adjacent to the monster. If the monster happens to have another creature grabbed in its mouth when you do this, then you free both yourself and the other creature that's grabbed by the monster's mouth. The second way to free yourself is by cutting your way out. A swallowed creature can attack the creature from the inside using either unarmed attacks or weapons of light bulk like daggers and sickles. The monster is flat footed against these attacks and all damage is subtracted from the monster's hit points as usual, but if a single attack deals an amount of piercing or slashing damage equal to or greater than the monster's rupture value, then you cut yourself free. You can also try to blast your way free by casting a spell, but remember, if the spell has a verbal component, you lose all of your remaining air, and if it has any other kind of component, then it has the manipulate trait, and you must pass a DC5 flat check due to being grabbed. Also, just like with a weapon attack, only piercing or slashing damage can be used to cut your way free with a spell. And note that the rules specifically say that the swallowed creature can attempt to cut their way out. By raw, no rules are provided if an ally of the swallowed person wants to cut them free from the outside, so each GM will need to evaluate the scene and make a decision for themselves. For example, the GM might require players to pass an appropriate recall knowledge check about the monster to know where their stomach is before they can try to cut their friend free. They might also increase the monster's armor class if their stomach is in a hard to target location. For example, the Dinosuchus, like a crocodile, probably has its belly flush to the ground making it harder to hit from the outside. But that's all assuming the monster is still alive. Once the monster is dead, allies can free a swallowed creature from the monster's corpse by spending a combined total of three actions cutting the monster open. Those are the general rules for Swallow Hole, but there is another related monster ability that we need to discuss, and that is Engulf. Engulf works much the same way as Swallow Hole, except instead of grabbing a victim in their mouths first and then swallowing them, when a monster uses Engulf, they simply need to move through their victim's space. They basically fold their bodies around their victim, completely enveloping them. For example, a gelatinous cube doesn't have the mouth or jaws needed to swallow a victim and instead has the Engulf ability. The Engulf entry for a gelatinous cube says DC-19, 2d6 acid, escape dc19, rupture 7. That should look pretty familiar, except it has an assigned dc, and it does not list a maximum size for the victim. Using engulf takes two actions, and allows the monster to stride up to double its speed score, and freely move through the spaces of any creatures in its path. In the case of a gelatinous cube, it has a speed score of 15 feet, so it moves 30 feet when using engulf. When it enters another creature's space, if that creature is of equal size or smaller than the engulfing monster, that creature has to make a reflex save versus the engulf effects DC. In the case of a gelatinous cube, its size large, so it can freely move through any creature's space while using engulf, and if that creature is size large or smaller, it would roll a reflex save versus DC 19. If that creature is size huge or larger, then the gelatinous cube can still move through its space, but it cannot affect it with engulf. If the targeted creature succeeds the saving throw, then they can choose to either jump into a square to the side of the engulfing creature's path, or they can choose to be pushed in the front of the monster's movement and be placed in an empty square in front of wherever the monster stops. And note that a monster can only attempt to engulf the same creature once per engulf action so they can't snake around in a circle trying to pick up the same enemy over and over again. If a creature fails this saving throw, then they're engulfed by the monster and from here things function almost the same as if they had been swallowed whole. The victim gains the grabbed and slowed one conditions, they have to hold their breath or start suffocating, and they suffer the listed damage when they're engulfed and again at the end of every turn following. They can attempt to escape by rolling a check versus either the listed escape DC or the monster's athletics DC, and they can attempt to cut themselves free by exceeding the monster's rupture value with a single attack that deals slashing or piercing damage, and note that the engulfing creature can only engulf as many creatures as it can fit in its space. So, for a large sized gelatinous cube, it can engulf either one large sized creature or four creatures that are medium or small. The only real difference between being engulfed and being swallowed whole 
is when you are swallowed whole and the monster dies, your allies can spend three actions to cut you out. Whereas with engulfing creatures, when they die, you're automatically freed as their body loses cohesion. Swallow Hole and Engulf are very similar, but their mechanics are different, so let's break it down like this. Swallow Hole takes one action, but can only be performed if the monster already has a victim grabbed in their mouth or jaws. Engulf takes two actions, but the monster gets destroyed at twice its speed and move through any occupied squares. When using Swallow Hole, the stat block states the maximum size creature it can swallow. It can only swallow one creature of this size or any number of smaller creatures allowed by the GM. The stat line for Engulf does not include a maximum size entry. Instead, the maximum size that can be engulfed is equal to the monster's size, and it must be able to fit all of its engulfed creatures in its squares. When using Swallow Hole, the monster attacks their victim by rolling their athletic skill versus the victim's reflex DC. On a success, they swallow the victim, and on a failure, nothing happens. With Engulf, it's not the monster who makes the roll, but instead each creature of its size or smaller that the creature moves through the space of needs to roll a reflex save against the DC listed in the Engulf stat line. On a success, they either jump into a free space to the side of the monster, or let the monster push it until it stops and ends in an empty space in front of it. Once a creature succeeds on this check, the monster cannot attempt to engulf them again until the next turn, and on a failed save, the monster engulfs them. Once a creature is swallowed or engulfed, the mechanics are mostly the same. They suffer the listed damage when they are consumed and again at the end of each of their turns. They have the grabbed and slowed one conditions and must hold their breaths or start suffocating. They can free themselves by either succeeding at an escape check or by cutting their way out. They can only attack the creature with unarmed attacks or weapons of light bulk, and if a single attack deals an amount of slashing or piercing damage that is equal to or greater than the rupture value, they cut their way out of the monster and free themselves. Spells can also be used for this purpose, but remember the limitations due to holding breath and also having the grabbed condition. And the last way a victim can be freed differs between the swallowed hull and engulf abilities. With swallow hull, when the monster dies, people outside of the monster can spend a cumulative total of three actions to cut the victim out of them, and with engulf, it loses cohesion and anyone engulfed by it is instantly freed. Before we close, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. These videos would not be possible without their continued generosity and support. Members of the How It's Played Patreon community receive special benefits like exclusive content and getting to vote on the topics I cover. Visit the links shown at the top of the screen and in the description if you'd like to know more. If you would like to support this channel and help it grow, the easiest way to do that is by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you get notified when new videos release. And I can always be reached through Twitter and Facebook too. Thanks for watching, take care, and happy gaming.